Tucked away off the beaten path, the eastern shore of Nova Scotia has tales of rugged and unspoiled wilderness that rise out of the fog-shrouded coves of the Atlantic Ocean. Over the years, I've fallen in love with a small fraction I've seen, and the prospect of a grand adventure of the entire coast has stuck with me. But it wasn't until this past spring, when Rachel and I got into sea kayaking, that this dream would become a reality. To sea kayak the entirety of the eastern shore by paddling 400 kilometers from Nova Scotia's capital of Halifax to the western tip of Cape Breton Island. Our biggest concern is the way the timing worked. We'd be traveling during peak hurricane season. This was compounded with our lack of experience. We've only sea kayaked a handful of times. So it was important to learn the basic skills and seek advice from our local experts before heading out. This middle thing's gonna be an issue. The skag. So we have all this stuff here for two weeks, and this is the first time that we're seeing if it all fits in the kayak. Ideally, you'd want to do this before getting to the put-in, but just due to the time and 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 whatnot, we're here, and uh, this is the first take. All right, guys, this is it. Woo! So originally the plan today was to do a full day, but this morning it was 70 kilometer winds and five to seven foot swell. So we opted for doing a half day and staying within sort of the Bedford Basin. Thank you. When the opportunity is there, you gotta jump on it. Great day to ease into this trip. We had dinner at a restaurant, I had a beer. But over the last few days, we've been tracking the storm that has been coming through. But what makes it even more challenging is the start of this trip is through some of the best surfing here in Nova Scotia. A lot of exposed coastline and not a lot of hiding spots for us. So we're gonna be out there really exposed and we're on the tail end of this big storm. So hopefully it works in our favor. We're gonna check again tomorrow morning. What a start to a trip. Looks pretty calm out there, Rach. I think this is our window. When I woke up, I looked at the, at the forecast and it looks like we have a bit of a window this morning. So we got up at around 5.30, out the door, quarter to seven now. The wind's supposed to pick up this afternoon. So the plan is to do one of the large crossings 
before the wind picks up. I had a bit of a close call there. Earlier, I didn't get this on film, but a wave broke on top of the boat. And I almost lost it. We're just passing Lawrencetown and we had to push ourselves off two, maybe three kilometers offshore because the swell was really lifting when we got to those breaks. We have a spot in mind that we know we could stop. And I think we're gonna do it. Where we wanted to land is just closed out with waves, so we're gonna try the other side of the peninsula. It's the exposed wind side, but there doesn't seem to be as many waves. Woo! Oh! Not many good spots to park here. down. Quite the eventful morning. We're on the water for about 18 kilometers, so about three hours out there. And we wanted to get to this peninsula. And originally the goal was to go around the backside to hit the leeward shore. But there was a wall of crashing waves in front that we couldn't get through. So we decided to do a crash landing on the front. Rachel got a big wave that just landed on her back. She spilt out, her and the boat came to the shore, broke the rudder, as well as Rachel lost her hat and her sunglasses. Wild morning. What's your take on this morning? I think it was what we expected, but it was hectic. Pretty intimidating out there. But we're happy, safe and healthy. So it's all good. I think we're gonna stop her here for the day. The wind's supposed to pick up to about 40 kilometers an hour and we're both pretty happy to be on land. Yes! <laughs> First repair of the I trip. I was so nervous. <laughs>
Oh, that feels good. We're gonna go get a new hat. So we are lucky that we are in civilization because there's a local surf shop about a kilometer from where we're camping that has hats. So we're gonna get Rachel another hat. No. Done. Sweet. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Fresh hat. <laughs> right on. All right, water. Chickpea coconut curry with eggplant, sweet potato, carrots, green beans, and corn, and some rice. Dense. The wind really picked up in the afternoon, 40, 50 kilometer gusts. It has died down a lot, and we're looking at the weather for tomorrow. And it's supposed to be sort of like today, but we have another day through Surfer's Alley. Surfer's Alley is what we're calling the section of land between Halifax and beyond Martinique Beach to the 100 Wild Islands. A lot of exposed coastline, a lot of white knuckle paddling through that swell. Today on the water, we noticed the biggest swell and the most potential for breaking waves were always happening at those points. And we learned we want to stay about two, maybe even three kilometers offshore so to not have to deal with that potential breaking wave on us. How are you feeling after that spill today? I feel like it didn't impact me enough to scare me, but it was a lesson learned for sure. Yeah, you totally got baptized by the sea. We landed the boats at separate spots. Lack of communication on our part. I landed and I looked down, down shore and I see Rachel in the water, both hands up, and the wave ahead of her is the, her sea kayak getting pushed into shore. We had a bit of a scare with the rudder. Got Rachel a new hat. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> because From Halifax Paddle. I guess the last thing is get her some sunglasses as we, uh, the next town we go through. Very recoverable crash landing. Yeah. It could have gone a long worse. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just relax and net at camp now and get ready for an early morning tomorrow. Monster slab of pie right there, also known as fool's gold. We have it a lot in the rocks here, but usually it's smaller than a dice. Really cool. Lots of stuff to explore on the beach here. Rachel's doing one last look to look for her hat. Fell asleep when the sun came to rise And I tried to rewrite what is right and where it dies I'm still a child on the ground where I lie It's funny how the dark is reflected in the eye of the Trying to beat the weather again today. It looks like around 9, 9.30, the winds start picking up and push until about 3 p.m. this evening. So there's gonna be that window in the middle of the day that we might not wanna be on the water. This morning, we're gonna to try to do as much as we can. We're keeping a close eye on the weather as we go and making sure we have some sort of escape route throughout the day because the winds are going to be picking up and we just don't want to get in a situation where there's white caps and we don't have an exit plan.
Roger straight. So as luck would have it, the beach that we landed on is about a five minute walk from Mr. Dave Green's house. Dave is not home, he's in Toronto, but I know where his key is and we're gonna go in there and make some coffee, fill up our water bottles and charge our filming batteries. Knock, knock. Ooh, it's beautiful in here. Nachos. We also got lucky, we did not plan for this, but as we were coming back with our second load of stuff, there's a crack of thunder and it just started pouring with rain. So it was perfect timing that we got here. Pack out. <laughs> First pair of shades. Boop, 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 beep, bop. I want to quickly talk about the wilderness of Nova Scotia. We're incredibly lucky to live in a province where nature's at our doorstep, but it's not always that simple. See, a lot of our land is privately owned, and over the last decade, we've been seeing an increase in development and fragmentation of our wild places. This is why I want to talk to you about the Nova Scotia Nature Trust, a nonprofit conservation group dedicated to protecting the natural legacy of Nova Scotia. So far, they've helped protect over 25,000 acres of ecologically significant land. I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. Over the years, I've spent a lot of time enjoying the land that they've protected. This includes one of my all-time favorite places, land within the 100 Wild Islands, which you guys will see later on in this video. Right now, they're working urgently to protect more special places before it's too late. Although some land is donated, they rely heavily on public fundraising to buy and steward these properties. If you want to do something that'll truly help our environment, please consider donating. The link is in my description and it's super easy. Hit up their website, click on donate now. Choose where you'd like it to go. I've selected area of greatest need. You can even make it a monthly donation or even a gift for a friend. And that's pretty much it. Let's help the Nova Scotia Nature Trust keep this province wild. Now back to the video. It's about four o'clock, the wind's dying down. We're gonna try to do another 10, maybe even 15 kilometers. Dinner, Rachel. We've made quite a good push since landing at Dave's place. Now we're just trying to figure out where we wanna to get to. This area of the shoreline, there's a lot of these capes it's these points that jut out and they're all drumlins. So it's just these really cliffy lands. There's not many good camping spots. So we're looking at a map trying to figure out what would make sense. And each spot is about six, seven, eight kilometers apart. And what we don't want to do is get ourselves into a situation where it's getting dark and we don't know where we're going to camp tonight. Just about three kilometers up, there's this point of this cape that looks like there's a big gravel bar but we'd also be very exposed there. The weather's not supposed to get worse tonight, but you never know. But we are gonna check it out. That's gonna be our first option. Access looks tough. I'm gonna give it a check. There seems to be a spot here that's not too bad. Lots of wash out here. This entire area has been built from big storm events just pushing all these rocks up.
The sea is looking a lot nicer today. And we're leaving Surfer's Alley, the first chapter of the trip. The next few days are gonna be really nice if it stays like this. Oh no! Wet butt in the morning. There's a little blue sky on the horizon. The wind has shifted. It's coming straight from the north. But it just, it's light. It's real light, there's no swell. We've got a beautiful day coming up. We're finding it's tough to find pea spots. Especially when you're about three kilometers offshore. There's a small little island spit here that looks like it has potential. Rachel. The seal right there. We stopped at this spot to take a pee and it is full of seals. Every nook and cranny, there's three or four seals sleeping and we don't want to disturb them, but they, they are aware that we're here now. There's a five kilometer crossing to Long Island over there, or we can go inland and sort of zig, zig and zag. What do you want to do? I think we go for it. And worst case, we, go, we stay on the inside. And if it goes bad, we just start working our way towards shore. Oh, we're getting ballsy. <laughs> Coming on lunch, it's almost 12 o'clock. Our original route had us follow the shoreline, but the weather allowed us to island hop. We're in Porter's Passage right now between these two islands. It's, it's pretty nice. We have left Surfer's Alley and we're coming into a familiar place. We're about to enter the 100 wild islands of Nova Scotia. This is North America's largest archipelago. It's full of islands, white sand beaches. You would think you're in somewhere in the Caribbean. Hopefully we're gonna line up our evening with camping on one of those beaches and maybe not push it tonight so we can enjoy this place. We're also gonna be stopping at Murphy's Campground to do a water refill. We're noticing that we're going through at least six liters a day. There's not as many water sources as, as we'd like, so we're gonna take advantage of them when they come. So it's a little out of the way, but it's well worth our time. Potable drinking water. It's been a long day, productive day. It's only 4.30, but this is our first full day of just paddling. 
There might be a root far left here. We wanted to get off a little earlier today. For one, it was our first full paddle day. So we want to get, let our bodies adjust to the big days, as well as we're in the Hunterwild Islands. Beautiful white sand beaches everywhere. We wanted to spend a little extra time on one of them. And we pulled up on this one. I'm a little overstimulated right now. I don't know what activity to do. Walk the shoreline, fish for mackerel, snorkel, I think I might snorkel. I brought my wetsuit. I didn't know if I'd use it or not, but it did fit if we were windbound or, or I, I don't know. I just, I, I love snorkeling and I thought there might be some opportunities and maybe today's that day. I'm gonna try without my snorkel first because it is pretty warm and we'll see if it's, if it's all right. Uh, if not, I'll jump into that wetsuit and see what we see. It does get a little colder when you get a little further out. halfway through my camera died but I spent another half an hour or so just exploring underneath the waves. Really sandy, it goes really far out with a lot of sand. While I was doing that Rachel was setting up dinner and tonight we're having a northern scavenger favorite bacon mushroom risotto. <laughs> Looking at a map, there's at least two full days without a water source. So the water we have on us has to last us a little over 70 kilometers of travel. I'm slightly concerned. Just because we'd have to have two really big days in order to get to the next water source we have marked on the map. Water is a big limiting factor out here. The ocean, it's salt, you can't drink it. We're relying on stops like Murphy's Campground or rivers or streams to get us through this trip. We have to be very smart with our water rations, but still make sure that we're not dehydrated. So it's gonna be a fine balance. Today we have a big crux of the trip, Taylor's Head. It's a five kilometer peninsula that goes straight out into the ocean. And we've heard of paddlers being stuck on either side because of bad weather. If it was like it was a couple days ago, we'd be waiting, but today there might be a window. Last night around one o'clock, there were some strong gusts that came through. It was like rattling the tent. And I was thinking to myself that this is, if that stayed, we were gonna be stuck here, but it really laid down and now it is super flat. I'm just ready. Hopefully we can do it today. Around Phoenix. So that's that right there. 
Yeah, that's Iron Bound right in front of us. And beyond is Phoenix. Iron Bound. Stop for a pee break. Taylor's head is in striking range. The weather's not too bad, but it's about a four kilometer cross and get there. And then we're gonna be pretty exposed. I think these are ideal conditions to be doing something like this though. Wow. Looks like it's an old ship or something. Oh, I don't like that. It just, the distance has not changed. It feels like it's like the same. Yeah, we're away. still there. That, that little island's still there. Well, I thought we've gone really far. I looked over and we're like barely past this softwood island. Yeah, we just gotta get to the other island. Once we get to the other island, we just go to the next island and then our beds are there. It's getting later in the day. We heard about a cabin that's about three or four kilometers from here. And if it's nice, we might end up staying. It's hot in here. Yeah. It's hot and dank. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hot and muggy in here. Change of plan. We will not be staying at the cabin. We're going to be staying at that beach over there. We're here to see sunsets. We're here to see sunrises. We're here to enjoy the crisp summer air. Cabins are for a colder season. What's going on with your arm? Covered in salt. <coughs> is that your armpit PO or is that the salt? Both. Yeah, we don't really know what to do. We have limited fresh water, which we gotta do an inventory on. Other than that, we can't wash ourselves off in, in fresh water or wash any of our clothes or anything, because it's only salt water. What do sailors do? We should have done a little more research. We still have eight liters of water, so we're looking good. It just means we haven't been drinking enough during the day. I think both of us have only drank one liter today. Pretty dehydrated. Looks like we really didn't have to ration as much as we did. There's another water source coming soon, so we should be all right. How do you feel about today? Really good. We got 39 kilometers done. Biggest day. I'm feeling strong. Despite what this looks like, I'm feeling <laughs> strong. You're crushing it today. <laughs>
Here, sit down. I'll serve you up. Thank you. sort of coming from right, northwest. Mm. So in a few days, we lined up a food drop with my dad and I think we're ahead of schedule. So I just want to make sure that we don't mess up the, uh, the timing here. I think we can get there the morning of the Friday. Really? One and a half days. I might see if my dad can just drop it off sometime today. Yeah. Could be there in the morning, could be there tonight. No matter what, it, it could be there for a week, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We just need it there. We started out the food drop with my dad. We're all set. I think today is going to be a beautiful day and we're going through a huge island system. And again, I think it's going to be a very productive day on the kilometers. Also a big win. Rachel doesn't drink all her coffee in the morning. So she offered up half her rations to me. So every morning now, I'm gonna get one and a half. <sighs> Gotta love her. So far yesterday and this morning have been some of my favorite scenery so far. Obviously we're on a bit of a schedule, so we can't be checking out all the spots. But unlike other trips, we are essentially in our backyard. So all the spots were like, wow, that's that'd be really cool to check out. We can check out. It's just it's a great recon for future trips. How much water do you know how much water do we have left right now? Five, six liters. The alternative is wait till we get to the drumhead market. Yeah, there's no way. So we have to go off route by like 2k. And we have to go underneath that bridge to where that fresh water is flowing in. There's a couple houses on the shore up here. And we hear a chainsaw. Rachel might go up and ask if we can do a water fill up. It would save us about four kilometers of paddling and some time just paddling up this river, going under a bridge and filling up our water bottles from our creek. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, appreciate oh that. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You give the honors. <laughs> you got it? Yep, got it. My arms are still working yeah. enough. I stepped on something on the way up here and I'm really afraid. I don't know if it went through my boot or not. I just don't want it to be a cut. Did we take this shot? Yeah. I can't believe I cut my foot. I'm mad at myself. I've been doing so well. Yeah. We started getting into more of the open island system here and we're having lunch at this one island that's very small but it's full of diversity. So many little plants of different types. It's a really nice spot because there's some wind to cool us off a bit and also to keep the bugs away. The 
this afternoon we have a pretty significant crossing to a couple large islands that are off the coast a bit. They look very interesting, so we're going to try to trace the shoreline as we go through there. There's nothing you can do until I see you smile just below those eyes. Ah, oh, Trump Cap Island. We have left the island system and we're entering Liscombe. Liscombe, it's a lot more open water and the wind's picked up too. We have about six kilometers to a point. Right now we're on a lighthouse island. Quick pee break before we're gonna be sitting down for a while. What's the fuel of choice? Fruit source plus veggies. Six to seven K crossing. That away. Can you make it? Ah. Oh, we're coming around now. Pretty uneventful crossing. Slight breeze on our back. It sort of died down from when we started. It's tough when you're just looking at the point way down there and you just paddle towards it for an hour, hour and a half. So my thoughts are our options are either here or here. Okay. What do you think? Um, I, I'm happy with our distance today. If we want to go 2K and I'm happy to do more. Yeah. I'm happy to just go here. Okay, let's go. We got to camp for the night. It's another gravel beach similar to yesterday. A little harder to find a camp pad, but I think I found one back here in the grass. Just needs a little work. One of our subscribers, Laura, has a company, Moonlit Mountain Freeze-Dried Foods, and she was kind enough to send us a few packages for this trip. We have three different types. Tonight we're going Greek lamb stew. I've never had lamb in the backcountry. Let's, let's get into this. This looks really good. Lamb, onions, garlic, tomatoes, tomato paste, red wine, currants, brown sugar, cumin, lemon juice, bay leaf, cinnamon, parsley, and rice. That seems like some healthy stuff for us. There's a thousand calories per serving here, which is great. Also, I should add that this is a Canada run company. I don't know if she ships to the States and if there's a website, the link is in the description. The meat rehydrated really nicely in there. Rachel's got to fix up her foot today going up to get water. She stepped on something. The house, there was a lot of stuff around. Luckily, she had her tetanus shot, but she's gonna treat it tonight. I also have a rash on my thighs for my bathing suit. The inner mesh is really irritating, so I'm gonna cut that out. Long day out on the water. We pulled in another 35 kilometers. And it looks like that's a good thing because we might be delayed. So service along this route is pretty spotty. So we have our satellite phone and we have Kyle back home being our weather guy. I got a message from him saying that it looks like a major system. Hurricane Franklin is arriving next Wednesday into Thursday, which is gonna bring in screaming winds and big waves. That would be a big delay if a hurricane hits us. 
we are getting into hurricane season generally around september october is when the hurricanes start hitting nova scotia and we're just on the cusp of that i don't know what this is going to do for our route in progress it's a little concerning the hurricane's an event it'll come through and we just got to hunker down but it's the days after how mean the sea stays and if we're in a vulnerable situation we might not be able to finish the trip. We're just gonna have to track this thing and hope for the best. The ocean is a volatile place, so is the weather. Things change. And in the meantime, we'll just have to be grateful of every day out here and take it one day at a time. We both had a pretty restless sleep last night. I think it was about thinking about our fate on this trip. And some development on the weather front, Hurricane Franklin is set to hit next week. But in a couple days, we're gonna be getting hit with a big storm. High winds, 50, 60 kilometer gusts with 1.6 centimeters of rain. That's 160 millimeters. It's gonna be an absolute downpour. We wanna get into a safe spot for tomorrow night. Today the goal is to get to the drumhead market where our food drop is so we can get all that organized so tomorrow we can get as far as we can before the storm hits. The drumhead market is still a full day away so we're gonna have to push today to get there. There's some really eerie clouds forming on the horizon there. Try to cut a corner there. It's been a bit of a grind this morning. Luckily the weather died down a bit. There's an easterly wind and that generally signifies bad weather is on its way in Atlantic Canada. You become really in tuned with the weather when you rely so heavily on it. There hasn't really been many places to stop. So this morning we traveled about 22, 23 kilometers to this gravelly spit. <clears throat> and the same thing with this afternoon. Not many spots, very exposed. Luckily the weather has died down. That is my saying. What's that is my thing? mindset. We're gonna sit in our kayaks and we're gonna get comfy and we're gonna paddle all the way to Drumhead Market. We've just reached 35 kilometers. The town of Drumhead is in sight. Maybe another 3K. Market closes at eight. I'm no mathematician, but I think we're gonna make it. For a couple of non-kayakers, this is tough. How many strokes does it take a non-kayaker to turn into a kayaker? So when we get back, we'll do some hard math. 
and figure out how many strokes we've done this trip. Alright guys, a little different night for us. We made it to the Drumhead Market, met the owner, Martin, hell of a guy. He fed us, we had apple pie, big slices of bread. He also knew a lot about weather, so we went over the, uh, the upcoming days. Also recharged a bunch of batteries, so we're in good shape there. The tough news is tomorrow and the next day, we're getting some serious weather. 50 kilometer gusts, 1.5 to 1.7 meter swell. We don't really know if we're gonna be able to travel at all tomorrow or how far we're gonna be able to travel. So we're gonna take it as it comes, but at least we got recharged batteries so we can film it all. We'll see you tomorrow. Heading up to Martin's for some breakfast. The one thing I said I was craving, eggs. <laughs> mm. So this is the guy we're nervous about right here. This hurricane coming up right to where we are. The weather today is not looking good. Tomorrow's looking worse. So I think we're going to be staying in Drumhead this weekend to wait out this storm. I think it's the safest option. We're ahead of schedule, so this is the perfect opportunity to not put ourselves in danger and have a couple rest days. We're pretty exposed where we are right now, so we're gonna set up at a new location. We were talking to one of the locals. She offered it up for us to stay on her property, so we're gonna move over there. So what happened last night? My mattress deflated a few times during the night. I just blew it up to try to figure out where that's at. And it's right at the seam. I just bought this right before the trip. It's the Vectair Comfort LT. And looks like there's a bit of a gear malfunction going on here. So I'm gonna fix that up. We're pretty protected in this bay here by these islands, but beyond the islands, there is lots of white caps. Looking at the weather, 50 kilometer gusts, 35 kilometer winds, 1.5 meter swell. I'm glad we're here. It would be 
too rough out there. The rain's coming later tonight into tomorrow. The people of Drumhead have been nothing but incredibly nice. They're staying on the back of Cheryl's property here. Martin cooked us up a beautiful breakfast. I could spend another week out here just hanging out with the community. Really nice people. Can I massage here? I don't even know where it's coming from. I'm trying to like pinpoint it. And it just hurts so much. It is Sunday. Yesterday, we spent a lot of the day just hanging out, hanging out with Martin up at the store. There's two of them in there. Oh. And in the evening, we went over to Cheryl's place, played a bunch of card games, made dinner there, had some wine. There? Yeah, right on the, right on this edge, oh. facing out. <laughs> that would be exposed. Yeah. Dad used to take my brother out and they'd have picnics on that. Really? When the really? tide was down, when the tide was up, it was almost gone, but... Last night we got a lot of rain and Rachel had some very severe migraines. She was up for four or five hours last night with a pounding headache. The mattress didn't inflate properly. There's still more holes we have to deal with today. All in all, it really wasn't a good sleep last night. Today it looks like the weather's still going to be coming through, but dying down. Tomorrow and the next day, Monday and Tuesday, is our window to get as far as we can because on the Wednesday, so that four days from now, we're getting hit with that hurricane. We want to get as far as we can around the Canso Barrens Point because that is the most exposed section that we're going to be in. It's right at the tip of Nova Scotia, mean seas, mean weather. It's not a place we want to be during a hurricane. It's going to be a slow morning. I might head over to Cheryl's to get a coffee, start working on repairing this sleeping pad once again. What you think about that? Fresh coffee too. This is uh, this is luxury. <laughs> Call for it. No. Just around the cove, just past where you camped the first night. There's a red house. Oh yeah. Is this your famous camera? This is no, this is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good price. <laughs> As we spent the day hanging out with our new friends, the wind slowly died and the sun started to peek its head through the clouds. Cheryl, you are too kind. <laughs> Oh. Is there lobster in there too? Yes, there is. Yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> With our last evening in the sleepy town, we couldn't help but feel grateful of the serendipity of it all. Coming in with the storm and out with a new day, Drumhead was the perfect place to take in the hospitality of the Eastern Shore. With full bellies and fresh arms, Rachel and I are recharged and ready to take on whatever is going to come our way.
<laughs> Sorry. No, no, okay. Until next time. Thank you so much. We are off after two days in Drumhead. I couldn't think of a better place to be wading out the storm. The people there were so friendly. Cheryl and Martin in particular, great people. Now we're off for the next chapter of the trip. It's still really foggy this morning. You can get really turned around by fog. It's happened to me multiple times. So it's really important to navigate with the compass. You could start bending to the right or left a little bit and end up in the middle of the sea, which we did not want. And every once in a while, I'm just looking down at my compass and making sure we're on track. We pretty much have a direct tailwind and we're clipping along at about 8K an hour. It's not even 11 o'clock and we've gone over 20K. Can you put pressure on that because I'm going to have to like lean over. Yeah, that's good. Alright guys, I've officially just peed off the side of the boat with the help of Rachel stabilizing the boat. The shoreline's pretty exposed, so there's not many spots to land. Rachel just ended up peeing in her boat, and I strategically tried to aim outside of my boat. And I would say I got about 80% out. So this opens up a whole new world for us if Rachel's cool with just sitting in a pile of pits. Anyways, we're trying to thread the needle between two. Well, headband in an island. You want to follow me? Uh, not... Okay. <laughs> not really. Don't go right. Do you like breaking? Uh, yeah. Just you can break in the same spot. I know. Oh, God. God, God, God. The old piss pump. <laughs> what our lunch spot for the day. Very productive paddling morning. We had the tailwind and we went about 31 kilometers. Never done that before. So that's a, a personal best for both me and Rachel. The wind is picking up and it was getting pretty choppy out there. Now we're still about three kilometers offshore, but we came across this grouping of islands that's very shallow and uber protected. Every day I make one meat, cheese, and mustard sandwich and one peanut butter and jam sandwich. Earlier in the trip we were having two meat sandwiches a day and then the next day having two peanut butter and jam sandwiches but it was just so much salt one day and then too much sweet the other day so I started mixing it up and I think it, it hits the spot. You look like a badass BMX chick with that hat on. <laughs> I've taken on this new persona for the rest of the trip. Hopefully I don't despise this video when it comes out. <laughs> Heading back to the oil sands after this. Hello! 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 We're in some sort of harbor. I don't think it would leak from this into there. I don't know. It looks pretty 
pretty nasty though. Be careful where you squirt that. Golden shower. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oops. <laughs> We put in a solid day of work today. 50 kilometers in the beautiful Canso Barrens. I don't know if that's the technical name for it. It's the far point of Nova Scotia that is probably the most off the beaten path. And now we're just in this world of melting ice cream. So for most of this trip, we've been paddling through the Halifax Formation, which is a metasedimentary rock, essentially a slate. But here on the eastern spit of Nova Scotia, there's all this granite. Granite is a type of igneous rock and it forms intrusively. So it forms underground. At the interface of the crust and the mantle, you have magma and it can create magma chambers. And over time, these magma chambers can get pushed up. I think of it as ballooning. And it slowly pushes its way through as it's turning into a solid to the surface, ballooning into this granite rock we see here on the eastern spit of Nova Scotia. This is the same stuff that you see in Peggy's Cove. As it's coming up, it's not fully a solid and it's still really, really hot and they can pull off pieces of the crust and bring it to the surface with it. And I believe that's called a xenolith. And there's one over here we'll check out really quickly. Come on. This is a fragment of the crust that has been pulled up with this granite. This guy's so creamy, eh? Mm -hmm. It is sticky and humid this morning. Blood red sky. The storm's on its way. From our last forecast, it's gonna hit tomorrow. So today we're gonna try to make it to the closest town, which is Canzo, which is about 28 to 30 kilometers up the coast.
must be right around here. Yeah. This is going to be a little sketchy. 14K, which is good because we don't want to like... We don't want to get there really late. We don't want to get there really late and figure out where we're going to camp for this hurricane. Mm -hmm. Quick lunch stop en route to Canzo. We're about 15 kilometers out. I reached out to Chris of A for Adventure because I know he knows some people out there and has done some work in the area to see if he knows of spots or people that we could reach out to to wait out this storm. I'm pretty confident we're going to get there before any sort of storm stuff starts happening but it'd be good to have a spot in mind so we're not camping behind the grocery store. I've been absolutely blown away by this part of the province. It is like a whole different world. It feels like we're about to paddle off the side of the earth. But also it doesn't feel like we're in Nova Scotia at all with the rock and and the, like the terrain. It's beautiful. Definitely got to make a mental note to come back here a lot more times. I have two frogs up for grabs. I have two hot lips. Well, let's make the trade. Let's see your other one. It's not a two for one deal. <laughs> yeah. Two fresh, juicy frogs. Anything else you like to trade? I have a gummy worm that I'd be willing to trade. Oh. Uh, I don't really love gummy worms. You're the one that picked the gummy worms. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you can't just have a whole thing of frogs. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> We're just coming around Charity Island through the Narrows and Kansas in sight. Coming on four o'clock, weather's holding. We're in good shape. I got word back from Chris. Buzz and Emily are gonna be picking us up. Oh, Buzz. Nice to meet you, Noah. How do you do? Noah? No. Rachel? Yeah. Rachel. Have you been along for us? No, I saw you before you saw me. Okay. I was with your dog down the, down the road. You said me there. Definitely, thank you. My brother's he's not cross, but he's a new dog, so she is a she dog. She's a little rambunctious. She jumps up a bit. Down in the street. Joey Myers has a In the evening, the weather picked up and continued throughout the following day. The hurricane ended up being downgraded to a tropical storm, but we were still happy to be in a warm and welcoming place. We spent the day waiting out the storm and getting caught up on our journals and maps. We were incredibly grateful of our hosts, Emily, Buzz, and Alice, for letting two complete strangers into their home with open arms. start going out when the tide comes out of our harbor it goes that way. You know that if you on the pedal it would you'd be going right against the tide when you when you when you go through. Okay. For sure. It's pretty warm actually. Yeah. Like very warm. <laughs> Alright boys, appreciate it. Woo! We spent the last 24 hours hanging out with Buzz, Emily and Alice the dog to wait out the storm here in Kanzo. Today, we're heading out. It's still supposed to be pretty windy in the afternoon. We'll see how far we can get, but it's just good to be back out on the water. Kanzo is one of our coastal villages that hasn't really been influenced by tourism as much as other places. 
So the bread and butter of Canso is the fishing industry. And this is a proper wharf. These are all fishing boats going out to harvest their seafood. They fish lobster, haddock, shrimp, crab, halibut. There's a tuna industry out here, swordfish. They just pulled a huge fish out of there. Yeah, look. Look at this. We're just coming out of the channel between Canso and Durrell's. It was very common there. Now we're exposed out in Shetabucto Bay. It's much more windy, but there's almost no swell. From this morning, we have about 90 kilometers to get to the end. And we're following this coast, but it wraps all the way around. And you can see the final spot we're trying to get to way on the other side of this bay. It's wild to think that we're already that close to the end. significantly picked up. We're barely moving. Do you want to aim for the shore up here then? No, I think we shouldn't. We've had four weather days over the course of two weeks is really being in tune with the ocean and, and the weather to be able to travel it. You know, you can't beat it, don't force it, just go with the flow. The last three kilometers of paddling took us over an hour and a half to do it. We were aiming for this beach, it's leeward. This point behind us is breaking off all that wind and it's like a whole different type of environment in here. It's, there's no wind, it's sunny, and it's where we're gonna spend the rest of the day. It's a little afternoon and lots of exploring to do. This, we're in a whole new type of geology. You can see all this red and black rock. We have a nice flat spot where we're gonna set up our tent and have a big fire tonight with all the driftwood. It's gonna be a good day. What activities do you have in store? I'm gonna read and write and eat and make coffee and go for a walk and go for a swim. You. The tent that we're using on this trip is the Nemo Dagger Osmo three person. It was recommended from a subscriber who also hooked us up. Thank you, Jason. It's a three season lightweight tent, similar to the MSR Hubba Hubba. This is the first time I've used it on a trip. Some small differences compared to the MSR Hubba Hubba. The waterproof material goes all the way up to the zipper but it's also a little more loose. It has these interesting knuckles that you use to snap in the poles to the fly. I don't know how I feel about it yet because it's plastic and I'd be nervous that it might break, but so far it hasn't. I have noticed this has happened a couple times. It's popped out, but I think I could easily just glue that in. I sort of wish we got to try it out last night during the hurricane, but probably for the best that we didn't.
Order's up. We had the afternoon out here and there's two things I've wanted to do more of on this trip that I really haven't been able to do just because of timing. And that's fishing and snorkeling. There's a nice little protected lagoon behind me. I'm gonna get on the wetsuit and go for a little dive and look around. I'm hoping I don't get attacked by a shark. There's seals and it's overcast. Two things that get you into a sharky situation. All right, let's get it, let's get it. As to be expected, the water quality wasn't the best because of the storm. There was a lot of suspended sediment, but it was still nice to get out. Saw a lot of fish, not much else, but I always like to get an idea of what's below the waves. First cast with the new reel. What do I got? I snagged a mackerel. All right, we got a mackerel. These guys school. There's a spring run and a late summer run. They're a main bait for a lot of different fish species here. They're super tasty too. You can smoke them. You can put them on the barbecue. They also have that beautiful coloring on the back. Hopefully a little bigger this time. Second fish landed. We were seeing a lot of these guys when we were snorkeling. I don't know the correct name for them. Tatogs, ocean perch. They live in the upper 10 feet here in the Northern Atlantic. I'm pretty sure those are the two main species you can get here off the shore. I would love to go deep sea fishing here. Passing the guys in Canzo when they're bringing in those big fish. I would so badly just want to be on one of those boats and, and just see it all happen. Like even help out, of course. But that lifestyle really fascinates me. So any fishermen out there that would want to take me out on a day trip with them when they're hauling in their, their catch for the day, hit me up, please. I'd love it. The wind's really died down. We'll be able to move today. All right, we're off for another day. 
Probably one of the hardest parts about sea kayaking is getting your spirit on and not losing your paddle. It's like a balancing act. Let's see what the break is looking like when we get around this corner. There are some white caps out there, but nothing like yesterday. It's a little sloshy in here. trying to figure out where we are instead of going all the way into the bay we're gonna cross over when we get to the about the 10 kilometer mark conditions should be decent all day with a increasing wind it'll probably be about a two hour crossing which is a little scary I think it's time to cut across how far is it kilometers well, we couldn't ask for better conditions yeah it's perfect I'm pretty down to just do it <laughs> now we can eat lunch on the other side yeah I'm a little nervous but I'm down are you nervous yeah I might do a, do a gummy per kilometer for this one I don't want to extend this more than 10k I'll tell you that all right ladies and germs time for the biggest crossing of my life Part of it's definitely psychological, but there is safety being near shore. You know, if the weather picked up, it's just us and our kayaks out here. If a big storm came up, we'd be blown in whatever direction it takes us. It just really exposes yourself once you're out here. We got to the halfway point. Now it's just as easy to keep going rather than turn around if something were to happen. The weather's been holding. The shoreline's finally looking like it's getting a little closer. We successfully made it to the far shore, 10 kilometer crossing. We made it across the bay, really interesting. On this side, it's all glacial deposits, sediment along the shoreline, a lot of erosion. It's really sad to see a lot of these people who own properties along the coast are literally losing them to the ocean. And you can see in the ocean currents, all the murkiness compared to the clear water. Now we're just looking for some lunch. A lot of breaking waves here, so there's not many ideal spots to land, but we'll find one. Maybe even in this, this bay up here. It's a little after four o'clock. We came around the corner and saw this monster beach. We knew the next five kilometers was all gonna be exposed. This is also our final camp of the trip. Here we go, the final meal. Final dinner is one of our favorite meals on this trip chickpea curry. 
with some crispy onions on top. We've been trying to figure out how much extra food we have and I think we could last another week when you add all the extra meals from Cheryl, Martin, Buzz and Emily as well as the extra food that we packed for this trip. We have a lot. Perfect little shelter cove to wrap up such a beautiful trip. It's the final morning of an amazing trip here on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia. We got blessed with so many sunrises and sunsets. The weather over the last two weeks has been totally bipolar. It's either sunny days, perfect paddling, or way too mean to get out there. Looking at the weather last night, another big hurricane's coming through, and this one's gonna be a direct hit. It's gonna be in about two or three days, so we're gonna miss it. But it just goes to show you that this time of year, it's just hurricane season. Now until the end of October, so the next two months, I think we're gonna be getting a lot of hurricanes this year. As we round off our kayak journey, we also round off our geological journey. We started with the metamorphosized slates of the Halifax Formation, and then coming around the corner, we hit the intrusive granites that came up through the continental crust. And now we're finishing with a conglomerate, which is a type of sedimentary rock made up of all sorts of different types of rocks compressed together into its final form. My dad's picking us up at the takeout at 2 p.m. today. We have about 25 kilometers to go. We're gonna take it all in. Going to this trip, Rachel and I might have been in a kayak three or four times. And that made me nervous going on the ocean for two weeks, traveling about 400 kilometers. But throughout the entire trip, we tried to communicate as best as we could to each other. When the weather was bad, we didn't push it. And we took each day as it came. And I'm super proud of both of us. I haven't got enough yet. We just need more mustard and I'm good to go. It's nice to know that we're going to make it to the finish line. I think we made a good team and I'd like to do a future trip together. Maybe longer. I see the bridge! This was a successful trip and I am so happy we did this. The hills is the blood now smeared across my door While all the shadows now calling through the 